Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome back to another episode of The Practice. This show is an unrehearsed look into my creative process. I'm Stuart. I'm a 3D artist, illustrator, designer, and your pal. And I'm excited to have you back again. Episode 223. Uh, this week, I'm going to be doing sort of a, a little animation of this the magical elixir bottle. Um, I've made some really sort of simple animations and movements to it. Um, the first of which is this sort of rippling um, kind of movement, this this looping ripple. It might be a little tough to see in this preview. Uh, ripple across the surface of the liquid inside. And then the other thing I have is these, um, these sort of bubbles coming up. And it's all uh, lit and illuminated and, and rendered and looking kind of cool. So um, there's a little test that I wound up making. Let's open up a new file, sort of start from scratch here and make that happen. So I'm going to start really simply um, with a lathe. I'm actually going to hop out of Octane for the moment. Or out of, yeah, that Octane view at least. And what I'm going to do is just really simply draw out the profile of the bottle and throw it in a lathe. So that's really simple. We're going to need to adjust that, but just to get started. Let's put that in a lathe nerves, which is basically just going to rotate this whole thing 360 degrees and connect it all. And of course, you can adjust the angle that it connects at or that it, that it rotates the profile. Um, by default, it's 360, and that's the way we want it today. So you'll notice there's like a, a gap in the middle here. And what we need to do, a gap at the bottom, is set that point at zero. So now we have that. Closed off at the bottom, I'm going to drop that down a little bit, change the interpolation to a nice smooth one, sort of scale that up, and you can see how we're very simply and easily sort of making this shape here. Now, I'm not seeing anyone in the chat, wondering if folks are there, maybe we should do a quick restart of the chat. What's up, everybody? Trying a little bit of a new audio setup today. Hopefully it's a little more consistent. Let me know what you think. Had some technical difficulties this morning, as usual, audio being like the bane of my existence, but try and make it work. I'm a visual guy, I'm not an audio guy. I'm holding shift to drag in this one point because what I want is the stem of this to be vertical, but I want um, this nice round circular sort of bottom. What's up tutorials and some characters I can't read. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Glad you like them. All right. So fairly simply, that's, that's our sort of bottle shape. Let's make a little, background for it. What I'm going to do is just draw a roughly 90 degree spline here. I'm going to make it exactly 90 degrees with the scale tools. You know, many episodes ago, someone asked me about a feature that I wish I knew when I was starting out, like something I learned later in my Cinema 4D experience that is really useful that I wish I would have picked up sooner. And that, I think one of those would be um, learning to model with the scale tools. You can use the scale tools to reposition things. They're not just for scaling. So that's something I would I would have liked to have picked up sooner. So let's throw this in an extrude and let's see along which dimension. There we go. I'm gonna make this like eight thousand Got a little background for our bottle, a little psych, as they call it. What's up, everyone? Where, where's everyone watching from? Chat's kind of quiet. Let me know where you're from, and uh, let me know if there's 
any types of tutorials you'd like to see in the future. So this is very much like your, your typical um, like RPG style uh, elixir bottle, probably like a fairy potion from Zelda or something like that in this. Um, what I'm also going to do is, is draw sort of the top lip on here. Uh, so if I have this selected and I get the pen tool out, it's automatically going to connect it. So let's go into the side view here. And so it's interesting, um, maybe it's because I'm not as familiar with Octane as I should be, but I noticed that um, when I built the walls out of this, so as you can tell, these, these don't really have any thickness, the walls of these. And what I would do typically um, is select all these, um, do a create outline, just kind of add some depth. Right. Now, obviously, I need to reposition some of this stuff and get it all lined up properly. You see now, like the sides of the bottle have some depth. Um, but I was finding when I did that, I got really odd reflections with Octane. So I'm not going to do that at the moment. I'm just going to keep these walls, um, yeah, without thickness, just sort of the surface, so to speak. And I'm going to make a specular material. Just kind of drop that on there, fire up our octane, and there we go. I'm going to mess with this um, specular material. In fact, actually, let's make it a universal material so we'll have some more options. I'm going to turn off metallic. IOR, I'm going to turn to 1.51 because that's the IOR of glass. I should probably. Drop the opacity down a little bit. Let's add a little bit of boat to this thin film. Make it 1.51 as well. Just kind of add some color to the glass, makes it look kind of cool. We should probably add a little bit of roughness. And uh, we'll adjust the lighting. But let's get the interior part of the bottle set up. What I'm going to do very simply is just duplicate this lathe. And let's go to the side view again. And I'm going to rename some of these. Let's call this bottle lathe. So what we need to do is lose this portion and let's just sort of scale this in a little bit. Actually, let's not do it like that. Let's do it a little more evenly. I'm just going to move that up, call it 20 centimeters. And move this in 20 centimeters, move this down. 20 centimeters. And that should give us a pretty even thickness here. Um, let's isolate that. Here's another thing I want to do. Let's see. Is I don't want this to be all the way full. So I'm actually going to pick apart here the area. I think that's probably the right amount of fullness. Um, but as you can see, we don't have a top. So let's see what's the best way. Not close spline. What I actually want to do is add another point. I'm going to do that just by making a cut there. I'm going to move this into the zero position. There we go. And that gives us a cap, so to speak. Um, now we can see, let's make that a little easier to see. Let's go down with the opacity. And we can see we've, we've uh, got a filling there. 
inside. Got some liquid in the vial. Let me make this a little larger. Make sure it's sitting there. All right. I'm gonna make another universal material. There. Since this is going to be a glowing uh, sort of elixir, let's call it, I'm going to add a texture emission to this. This needs to come way down. I'm going to start at around 10. Now color, let's do like a, like a greenish blue. And let's add that here. And we should probably get a path tracing. Let's get some lighting in here. Adding some dark background lighting is going to make this um, going to make this glow a little work a little better because we've got sort of an overly bright uh, scene right now, an overly bright lighting setup. So let's darken that up a bit. I'm going to add. Oops. Just a little bit of warmth to the top of this, just for a bit of variety. You can see what that does to the surface here. And that's yeah, too much. Now I'm going to turn this power down. So we've got a little bit of a fill, uh, but it's still pretty dark in the scene. Uh, we should also add some additional lighting. And this is going to help us with our glassy feel have some nice reflections on the glass. There we go. There's one probably too bright at the moment. Let's drop that down like halfway or so. Still pretty low and I like the idea of making it a cooler, cooler color. Now let's add a little bit more lighting. This is going to be kind of a background light almost. Just behind the object, a little higher. And then let's drop the temperature to the warm range, but not that warm. Um, and the power is going to come way down, maybe like four or five. Just a little bit of a subtle fill. Let's see. Uh, so the walls of this are feeling a little thin. So basically what I want to do is scoot those in. All right, cool. So now we've got sort of a flat top to this, this potion, which I think is kind of boring. And actually now I think I've made the walls too, too thin. Let's scoot that back just a little bit. Cool, better. Um, so we're gonna isolate our liquid here. A little bit tough to see. Um, but you see there's very little, very few subdivisions across the top very few subdivisions in general. So I'm gonna change the subdivisions inside the lathe up to 36, but then on the top, let's get more subdivisions here. What I need to do is select that spline, uh, which you can see is running right along here. I'm gonna grab my, I'm gonna press K twice for my knife tool. I'm just gonna cut along here so we've got some nice subdivisions. You're gonna see what I'm gonna do with those next. So I'm going to group that inside the group by holding shift. I'm going to add a formula to the group here. It's going to affect our lathe. Um, 
you could make this sort of rippled effect at the top with a, with a bunch of different deformers. You could probably use the wind. You could probably use FFD or, or different things. I'm, I'm personally going to use a formula effector. I like it because it automatically loops on 30 frames and has sort of a water-like quality. Now, it starts sort of radially and, and, and circularly around the center point. What I like to do is pull it off. So we've only got one edge of that. We pull it off center and it's coming in at an angle. And that gives us sort of a, an even wavy kind of approach or, or a wavy kind of effect. Now, at the moment, the wavy effect is, is transforming the entire uh, liquid uh, you know, area here, the entire piece of geometry, like along the bottom and stuff, which is not what I want. I only want it to be affecting this top surface. But that's fairly easy to control simply by adding a fall off. I'm going to add a spherical fall off. You can see by default, now nothing's happening. That's because this, this field is at the center point of our formula effector, what we need to do is position that so that it's, why don't I actually just pull it outside of the formula, which you can do, just zero it out. And now you can see we're only affecting the areas uh, where this field is, which is what we want. I'm gonna make that bigger. So we're affecting the whole top, and we're still affecting the bottom a little bit, but the simple fix to that is just to go into this coordinates tab, and scale it down along the y axis axis. So now the top's being affected, the bottom not so much. So now you can sort of see what we're dealing with. We've got this wavy surface across the top. I'm going to make it uh, just a bit taller to make our waves a little more prominent. Let's, let's set up our rendering here. That's a good view of the, of the waves. So um, let's make this square format. I'm going to start at 960 by 960. I lock that. Hit this lock button. Zoom out a bit. Now with transparencies and illuminations and things like that, I'm, I'm going to change this from path tracing. Oh, wait, it's already at direct light. Huh. It was already on path tracing. That's interesting. Cool. Well, that's where we want it. We want it on path tracing. Typically, it's going to be on direct lighting by default. Path tracing is going to give us a little bit of a better effect, especially with these emissive materials. Um, let's see. Kind of center this thing up, get a nice angle on it. And I want to reposition this light so that our reflection where I want it. See here that the size of the light also affects the amount of light it throws off, which is logical. Uh, so let's go into these settings. I'm going to turn this down to 1080 at the moment. The samples are set ridiculously high. GI clamp lowering that number is going to give us a little bit less of what they call fireflies and like noise in the lighting. And let's throw on adaptive sampling. Um, I think that the glass material is a little bit dark here. So inside Albedo, I'm gonna I'm gonna turn that up. Huh. Would have, would have thought that would have given us a little more color. Some of this stuff is still a mystery to me. Let's see.
add a camera. I think some of these um, values we can adjust inside the imager as well. So maybe we want to bump that exposure, but bring the gamma down. Contrast, I think probably our power is too high on our, on our background light. I just want to take a peek at this and make sure it's looping properly, which it is. All right. Right. One thing I want to do is bring the emission up a little bit on our potion here. Let's see. I'm going to turn the specular down. I'm going to turn the roughness up. That's better. Um, we don't want the sheen or the coating or the thin layer or any of that stuff, I don't believe. Capacity, let's see. I don't want it all the way up. A lot of this is about just playing with the spider, uh, the sliders, and finding a position or a you know, happy medium that works for you. What's up, 192 megabytes, 007? <laughs> happy Tuesday to you. Adding metallic back in gives us a little more lightness, actually. I don't think I would want that. So a little bit of metallic, and then possibly we go back up in opacity. There we go. That's starting to give me a glassy look that I'm liking a little bit more. Um, let's check out I. Let's get where we want to be. Low dispersion. So with you. Now this is a channel I don't really know much about. I assume it's how the light kind of bounces around inside. That I don't know for sure. But in any case, this is starting to look good. 
very it's very noisy. So each of these frames, I think, is going to take a little while. Kind of digging the way it's looking in general. And this is most of what we wanted to accomplish with this image. Now the the next bit I want to add is sort of some some bubbling spheres in the inside, give it sort of a magical potion kind of vibe. And then we'll be getting pretty close. But I like um, sort of the light that's being cast here, the reflective quality of the vial isn't so bad at the moment. Actually, let's um, round off these edges here. They're a little bit hard line for me. I'm just going to grab these three and I'm going to hit chamfer, click and drag, and just add a little bit of rounding to those edges. It's going to make it look good. Great. Um, so adjusting the lighting here. It's looking pretty good. All right, now. Let's add a sphere, look down, throw our texture on it, Don't be too big at the moment, scale that deep down, add a cloner. I think I'm just going to use a cloner and some random, some randomness to make these bubbles, probably a step effector. So let's start with eight bubbles, bring them a little closer together, and let's... Let's make these a little easier to look at at the moment. All right, so let's make these a bunch smaller. And for ease of rendering, I'm going to turn that down to so 12 subdivisions. Uh, let's go with a plane effector. I want to scale that uniformly. Again, let's add a spherical uh, fall off. And you can see it's just affecting the ones in the middle. And that's because I want these balls to start off small and get bigger as they go up. Well, get bigger towards the middle, I should say, and then taper back off. So, what I should do then is let's grab our sphere and move this center sphere down a little bit. So now we've got a taper from small to largest to small again. And I think we could also do a little bit of randomness there. So let's call it like 10, 10, 10. And a little bit of scale randomness. I think boiling water here is what I'm going for. Let's see how that looks. Now it's, it's obviously too high. I want it to be coming out of the water, right? Or the elixir. We could probably scale the whole thing up a little bit. All right, so let's add a little bit of motion to these. Hello there. Thanks for tuning in. There's a few ways we could probably animate this. Hmm, 
also going to add a push apart. Uh, no grab effector push apart so that these don't intersect. So add that to group and go down to probably like 10, something like that. It's going to give us a little bit of distance between them, which I think would be a good thing. Now what I want to do is let's try to duplicate this spherical this spherical field and move it down 380 centimeters. Remember that number. And then we got to make sure that we have both of these accounted for inside this plane in the fall off. And I'm going to add the top one, the multiply, which I think should, should combine the two. Oh, let's do add. That's what we want. Yep. And so now what we'll be able to do is move both of these up. Hmm. You know, I don't think that's the way I want to handle this. I'm going to delete those. What I, what I actually want to happen is probably some sort of offset thing. Yeah. So that this cloner actually travels through because the bubbles need to be moving up and getting larger as they move through. Yeah. So what I'll do is let's duplicate this cloner and move it down, say, 450. Let's duplicate this cloner, go up, say, 450, 450. Um, cool. And then let's grab all three of them. Let's group them. And 1.2. Let's go to coordinates. Keyframe that. Move to the end. Scale it up 450. And we should get a nice loop. Of course, we want that movement to have a linear fall off. Cool. I think we could add a few more clones. Just add one or two. Um, cool. And let's check it out. Hmm. Also going to scale these spheres way, way down. They're barely noticeable. And then I'm going to make plane effector stronger. Because we've scaled everything down, we need the growth in the middle to be all the more severe. Cool. And now uh, it's, everything's kind of blown out and overly illuminated probably because we've got a, I mean it's because we've got a lot more of these illuminated objects in there now um, but I think we can control some of that the exposure here which is too high let's go down to like one the gamma can be even lower and frankly we probably need to turn down the brightness on, on this material yeah let's go to like four And what we might need to do actually is have, yeah, let's do that. So we're going to undo that. I liked this amount of, of illumination for the liquid itself, the main liquid, but I think it's too bright for the bubbles. So I'm going to make a separate material for the bubbles where the emission is much lower. Okay, I'm going to replace that here. Let's take that off. Yep. And now we're not as overly illuminated. We're not as blown out, so to speak. Whoops. 
All right, and you know what else always looks good? It will be very appropriate for this kind of illustration. I've used a little bit of bloom. So let's throw on that post-processing. Turn the bloom up. Let's get that glow going. <clears throat> now that we got that glow going, I think we can even go lighter and lower. Let's call it one and a half. Well, oh, not thirteen and a half, one point. And let's uh, turn the sampling rate up to five. This sampling rate is going to be basically the, the quality, the amount of samples that we're going to uh, prioritize. I'm going to add more samples to these two lights, these two illuminated textures, I should say, these emissive textures, uh, because they seem to be the noisiest. Cool. So that's pretty much it. Um, you're going to be slow to calculate your renderings, but I, th I think it's, um, or at least your preview here. Let's pick a frame and kind of let the rendering go through. See what we're dealing with here. I think the other thing I'm going to do is um, Lower this spherical plane a little bit so that the largest point of the bubble is going to be a little bit deeper down inside the bottle, which is better. Again, I think we can even go, let's go to like say six. Now our bubbles towards the center here are going to be even bigger. Good deal. All right. Couple last minute tweaks here to this bottle material, this sort of glassy material. If anyone's got a, um, you know, a more foolproof way to make a glassy texture inside of Octane, please uh, let a brother know. Drop something in the comments or in the chat. Um, I suspect there's a lot of great uh, sort of pre-engineered uh, materials you can download that have an excellent glassy look. Turn up huh, the opacity on the main texture for the elixir, for that liquid. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in. I wish I could pronounce your names. I think, guessing Korea, in the shape of those characters, but I'm not positive. Thanks for tuning in, in any case. All right.
doesn't seem to do anything. I'm almost there. I just worry that there isn't enough uh, like distinction between the glass itself and the material inside. You know, I think adding that sheen back in helps with the glassiness. There we go. All right. Actually, let's make sure these spheres have render perfect turned off because Octane actually does not like those very much. Cool. So let's set up the actual output and get some frames rocking. So let's do all frames. Actually, let's do 0 through 29. We're not going to do all 30. I'm going to go up to 1080. Obviously, let's turn on Octane Renderer. And pause this guy and see what we got. Actually, let's let's save it. Let's not be silly here. Number two for the year. Hope everyone's having a happy new year so far. Let's save that. Hit render. Cool. Here's the practice bottle I was working on. I think actually. The one we were working on just now came out a lot nicer. Good deal. So nice. This is our, our classic uh, RPG video game sort of uh, elixir vile kind of look, which is what I'm after. Um, looks like uh, Octane is estimating about two minutes of frame across 30 frames. I don't, I don't think it'd be a very good idea to have y'all sit through this, um, but you can, you can see through some of the previews how this is going to turn out. And if I go to, it's a very simple uh, view. Pause the bottle. You'll see we've got this simple animation here of the contents of the bottle, which is this bubbling out of the top of the vial and this wavy top using fields. We're going to have this very magical elixir. Um, and like I said, I'm going to let this render as I get offline, but I will, I will post the result so everyone can see it. Um, if you thought this was useful, if you found a tip or a trick that you think you'll use again, please let me know and feel free to, to share it with your pal. And if you have any further questions, don't hesitate to, to drop one in the comments section. Um, appreciate you tuning in. If you want to check out the work that I'm doing, hit me up on DLGNCE. 
on Instagram and the other social medias. The website is diligence.studio. Um, new, new videos every Tuesday, so hit that thumbs up and subscribe button, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.